began to look at the development of our Encore Complete RNA-seq library system, there were really two goals in mind. One of them was very pragmatic. It was really to, to provide a, a validated, well-developed, complete workflow. So to be able to have uh, a single solution that would allow you to start with isolated total RNA and end with a co fully constructed library that was ready to be quantified and sequenced. So you're able to look at both coding RNAs that, that ultimately make proteins, as well as non-coding RNAs that could have very important regulatory functions in cells and tissues. The more technically demanding aspect of that product, and really the, I would say the, the demand that was, was in the marketplace from what we were hearing from our customers, was to enable people to look at strand-specific RNA-seq. I would say this is a, uh, simply a complexity of biological information, okay? So we know the genes are on both strands of DNA, okay? Um, and they can be basically on top of each other or one within the other. And when you just look at non-strand specific sequence information, you simply don't know where this piece of sequence came from. There's a large body of evidence uh, for a range of species that the antisense transcripts carry out important regulatory functions. So once again, you're able to get a much more complete understanding of the biology of the system that you're studying. The RNA-seq methods that have been developed at Nugen rely on three novel approaches to produce strand-specific libraries with reduced ribosomal RNA content. Selective priming of first-strand cDNA synthesis enriches for coding and regulatory transcripts through the use of an optimized pool of primer sequences. The pool of primers has been selected to maximize the priming of coding and regulatory RNAs. The species used to design the set were human, mouse, rat, chicken, and frog. This set also works well with other vertebrates such as zebrafish. It is not recommended for lower eukaryotes in the animal kingdom such as Drosophila and C. elegans, nor should it be used for plants or prokaryotes. Transcript directionality is maintained by blunt end ligation of modified adapters to strand tagged cDNA. The sequence data that results from the strand-specific library is highly enriched for reads in the sense orientation. Insert-dependent adapter cleavage is a proprietary method that is used in some RNA-seq applications to further reduce unwanted, high-abundance transcripts such as ribosomal RNA or globin in the final sequence-ready library. Currently, we are only applying this method in the Encore Complete prokaryotic library systems. A select set of oligonucleotides is used to prime first-strand cDNA synthesis, generating a first-strand cDNA pool that is enriched for coding and regulatory transcripts. For clarity, we are showing only a single oligo priming reverse transcription. However, in practice, Reverse transcription will be initiated along the entire length of each transcript. Following RNA degradation, second strand synthesis incorporates a degradable nucleotide analog into the sent strand of the cDNA. The nucleotide analog tags the sent strand in preparation for strand selection. Double stranded cDNA is fragmented by sonication generally using Covaris Adaptive Focused Acoustics Technology. The keys to the strand specificity of the RNA-seq methods are our unique forward and reverse adapters. By tagging the ligation strand of the forward adapter with the same degradable nucleotide analog used in the sent strand of the cDNA, we ensure that only a single directionally conserved orientation of the cDNA insert will produce sequence data. Following end repair, modified forward and reverse library adapters are ligated to the fragmented cDNA. During blunt end ligation, the forward and reverse adapters can be ligated to the cDNA fragments in two orientations. Base excision and denaturation eliminates sequences containing the nucleotide analog. 
leaving a single directionally conserved orientation that retains both forward and reverse adapters. Only molecules with both a forward and reverse adapter can be amplified during library enrichment, resulting in a sequence library almost exclusively in the sense strand orientation. Final library enrichment using forward and reverse adapter PCR primers generates a sense strand ribosomal RNA depleted library ready for sequencing. Give you just um, ballpark numbers from what we've looked at in, in a number of different RNA species with higher higher vertebrates, human, mouse, or rat samples. We typically see on the order of 20 to 25 percent ribosomal RNA content in those samples, which without any type of selection would be in, on the order of 70 to 75 percent. The table shows sequencing metrics from four samples: human brain reference, universal human reference, and mouse and rat total RNA. All three species show comparable levels of reads mapping to non-ribosomal sequences, ranging from 70 to 89 percent. The advantage of using total RNA as input is the valuable additional biological information found in transcripts mapping to introns in intergenic regions. All three species also show greater than 95 percent strand retention as measured by alignment to the RefSeq database. One of the most important features of any RNA-seq method is that it accurately reflects differential gene expression. The MAQC A and B samples, Stratagene Universal Human Reference and Ambion Brain Reference RNA, have been used extensively in gene expression validation experiments and are considered a reference standard for differential gene expression. Nugent generated RNA-seq differential expression data from these samples with Encore Complete. Here plotted on the x-axis is the difference in RPKM values, and compared that data to the log ratios from 659 TACMAN assays from the original MAQC report from 2006. This is a straight comparison of the qPCR data to the RNA-seq data with no additional filtering, demonstrating a very high degree of correlation with an R value of 0.945. Let's say we see in this uh, 10KB genomic region that uh, there's a gene A expressed on the plus strain and the gene B express on the minus strain. In this view of the genome, two genes, parathymosin 1 and myeloid leukemic factor 2, map within 10 kilobases of each other. The top two tracks represent sequence read alignments from standard poly A selected RNA seq and Nugent's ovation RNA seq v2 system. With these methods, it's not possible to determine from which strand of the genome each gene is transcribed. However, as shown in the bottom two tracks, the Encore Complete RNA-seq data clearly reveals that parathymosin is transcribed from the plus strand of the genome and myeloid leukemic factor 2 from the minus strand. In the second example, we see two overlapping transcripts, PSIP1 on the minus strand and SNAPC3 on the plus strand. All three methods clearly show reads mapping to an intergenic region between the two transcripts. In the non-strand specific data, we can't tell where one gene begins and the other ends. In contrast, the Encore Complete data clearly shows that the reads are almost certainly coming from SNAP-C3. Example A and B on top of each other, you don't know if this is the expression from the gene A or from gene B. And that's important. So for people who really want to understand which gene is working, and you really do have to have the strength specificity. For further information or to contact us, please go to www.nugeninc.com. Mm -hmm.